I think Day's best for this. Yeah, but probably. I have to jump into the water. Uh, you will. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm in the water. Yep. Eventually, uh, if you. <laughs> Eventually, uh, if you don't catch up to the boat, uh, a shark will kill you. So. What? <laughs> Better swim, no. son. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> oh, there is a shark down here, dude. No way. <laughs> He's coming. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, welcome to VR chat. That was amazing. <laughs>
it's it's just it's just grown into a weird uh thing <laughs> over the past year for sure. Well, that's about how long that I've been following you, and and it's been kind of fun to watch it grow because it was just kind of all code and, and patents at the beginning, and it's mm -hmm. evolved into this thing where it seems like every other week you've got another video of some guy who leaked something about the supply chain or, or this that or the other thing uh, so it's been kind of fun to watch it uh, grow literally uh, I think I've had my, my wallet in my hand since uh, connect last year like I was ready yeah. for the two headsets to be revealed and ready for the pre-order we all were weren't we Eric I was ready I had my re mine ready to go and now that I know what the camber is gonna cost I'm not so ready anymore no yeah, yeah, I'm the same way <laughs> like i said i'm 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 i love the rift s i love the quest 2 but each of these headsets have fucking issues usb issues uh gotta restart the the, the gotta redo your boundary over and over and over again i want a headset that i i, I me personally I, I don't want a headset from oculus or meta anymore like I want something else. There's got to be something else that doesn't have all the fucking jank. I didn't get to have the index. I didn't have the any of the G2 or anything that. Um, even though the G2 has tracking, um, I guess not even that much issues. Just isn't as good a tracking as the Touch. From what you're saying, Wes, it's it's not as bad as people think. And maybe I need to look into that. I don't know. I think a lot of people, a lot of people are hungry for alternatives, but. It's kind of weird, Brad, because most of us in the space that are ready for new hardware are gaming enthusiasts. But when you talk about where Meta's going, I mean, it doesn't seem to be what they're focused on, at least in the near future, is it? Uh, I've, I've always kind of been saying this the past, well, especially the past few months, as I'm kind of getting a better ear on what these large, especially these large companies, um, the gaming market doesn't excite mark zuckerberg anymore it doesn't excite it's never excited tim cook you know at apple um they're more excited about ar for sure like the dream is obviously the clear glasses and overlaying information right. immersive view but the technology is not there yet uh but they're investing in vr because they're like wait a minute computer vision technology has gotten very good uh manufacturing for pancake lenses or much thinner lenses and higher resolution displays brighter displays is getting really good we can make much smaller headsets that more people are going to willing to do more things um gaming is always very good for innovation in like the first years of any technology because gamers are willing to put up with a lot more just to get that experience but for the mass market, uh, it, I mean, it's great to have gaming on the side, but these large companies are realizing we got to pack more functionality into these things. Um, that's why Meta, like you, you hear about Cambria, they're putting a ton of focus on productivity. They're calling it a Chromebook for the face. And <laughs> nice. that's just where the things are going. And, and it's, it's, it's very kind of weird for people who have been in this uh, consumer VR since like 2016 is really when it rebooted. Because it's only been gaming. That's all the focus. I mean, o Oculus was a gaming-focused company. Um, the Meta Quest 2, when it released, all you saw was gaming ads. But the, the, the one silver lining about all of this is because we have all these large companies hopping in, realizing we can hopefully <laughs> get these MR headsets into more consumers' hands, is they're willing to pay more and invest more and compete more to bring VR technologies up to a higher standard. Uh, the biggest example of this is like six years ago, I remember Abrash went on stage and he was like, this is what resolutions and, 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 and everything our headsets have now. And this is where we think it's going to be in five years, like for resolution, we're going to have Verifocal and all of this. Yes. Uh, God. Never happened, right? Like, in fact, the only thing I think that has improved a tiny bit has been just the resolution, if you look at that chart. And that's pretty much it, the pixels per degree. But, um... Again, we're seeing uh, a lot more push on the high end, especially. Uh, Cambria's high end, they're gonna pack a lot more technologies in it. That's gonna be more expensive. Apple's gonna get in the race for sure. Like that's, and they're, they're packing really high end stuff. But as all these things get more people invested, more companies, like everyone's talking about, oh, well, Apple's doing something. Samsung wants to rush out with something now. 
Google is going to re-enter the ring. Uh, all, all the companies that we know right. that kind of dipped out when the VR gaming sales really kind of dropped around 2017, 2018. There was a lot of hype for VR in the early resurgence, but honestly, the, 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 the market wasn't even there back then. So a lot of companies dropped out, but we're seeing the opposite now. And it's thanks to the fact that, honestly, it's not gaming. So, Well, I mean, I would, I would argue that a lot of the reason for VR's popularity, you know, gaming aside, which gaming always kind of has been the big carrot on the end of the stick to get people in. And then, you know, they can build what they really want to build, which is a gigantic social and, and work platform. Uh, but the but the reason why it's been so successful over the last couple of years is because of affordability and accessibility and I just find it very interesting that it seems that they're heading they're kind of taking a step backwards in that while the, the technology is about to take a huge step forward with all sorts of new features uh, they're, they're putting themselves back behind that wall that kind of kept the masses out which I'm not so sure how that's going to work out for them. I'm, of course, very hopeful. I'm a, typically an optimist, but uh, I don't know. When they came out recently and said that it was that Cambria was going to be significantly uh, higher cost than the $800 that everyone was speculating, I said, hold on, wait a minute. They must not be planning on selling very many of these things at all because uh, I don't know very many people who aren't, you know, gaming enthusiasts that are willing to put that kind of money out. Yeah. Anyway. I, no, I, I do want to add to that just a little bit. Is sure. uh, I, I mean, I definitely agree. Uh, Quest 2 is kind of what pushed the VR market back into a healthy state. Um, even though I'm not a big fan of all of that for my own personal reasons. Oh, yeah. but. Most of us the are, quest, honestly. Yeah, I mean, the Quest 2 has allowed developers to kind of coast and actually make money off of VR. So that's a big benefit. But the issue is, especially we're kind of talking, we're hearing a lot of talk about, you know, recession times. Uh, the, the, the supply. We went from a supply chain crisis. I don't know if you guys are paying attention, but we're, <laughs> we've heard, we went from the fact that companies cannot get enough chips and everything from, from the factories, the fabs. And now we're going to the opposite already, yeah. like a complete opposite where AMD, NVIDIA, all these companies are actually cutting orders. And it, it, it's it's hilarious because we're just, we're going in this weird slope. And this is uh, kind of more notable for the Quest 2 because Facebook is actually obviously taking a loss per headset. And I know the big argument is, well, okay, yeah, uh, consoles do this as well. Consoles sell usually a loss, especially at the beginning and they make up with software sales. The issue is, from what I, I if we were to compare the amount of money uh, that Facebook probably gets from their software sales of everything that's sold on Quest compared to what like a PlayStation 5 gets uh, for their software sales, they're really not making that much revenue in terms of all the amount they're spending it all the time. So yeah, they're, they're it, the Quest 2 is insanely successful, but it's way less sustainable as the, the market's not everyone, every consumer's buying tons and tons of stuff. Um, right. So now and you have to think about, oh, and, go ahead. And to compound that, uh, the console life cycle is six to seven, sometimes eight years. And th they've kind of set themselves up, Meta, be, I mean, have kind of set themselves up for this more cell phone model where every other year people are expecting a new headset and you know that just compounds it it just means that when the hardware actually does start to become something where they maybe they wouldn't have to sell it for so much of a loss now they've got to put out a whole new one with new screens and all new tech in it and they're right back to the same problem that they started with right yeah i i think the the, the issue is um i and i've said this on my channel uh, i know some people will disagree, but uh, even though the Quest 2 is like the highest uh, retention rate headset that they've sold, whereas people are, you know, they're spending a little bit more time. They're coming back to the Quest 2 a lot more people than their previous products. Um, it's still not in a state comparable to consoles. Uh, people, There's still way too many people that are buying a Quest 2. They buy a few titles and then it just gets on the shelf for a it's long because, time it's because most of those games are what eric would call mobile games and they're just the depth 
to the gameplay is just not sustainable. People co come from that flat gaming world and they expect the games like Red Dead 2 and, and or at least hoping for them and they get in and they play some and they're like, hey, the, if they aren't wowed by the technology and it, most people are gonna put that headset down and they're waiting for that those big games to come and we're so close to it. It's just, uh, it's a weird time right now because we're kind of, we're in the in-between, right? So, uh, I don't know. I, I think they really, uh, I, th I think going back to the cell phone model thing, um, I think that's the big reason why they're wanting to do this is uh, every around every two years is when there's likely going to be a more powerful mobile chip processor where they can push the games further. Because honestly, uh, what they what they even get out of the XR2, which is based on like a three-year-old smartphone processor is yeah. crazy like honestly it, it's yeah, it's it it's it's magic um and it, it shows when you actually have to do all the reprojection you have to do all the the tracking which takes a lot of cpu you have to do all the computer vision you have to do all these things at once and they're underclocking it for the quest too you see you see facebook that's like okay well we 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 we, we, we we've uh, went all in with this standalone only model um they, they kind of have to innovate uh, to get to the software where people might want to spend more time. And it's not even just software. I, I, know, I know software is a big thing, especially for gamers, but I, I still stand by the fact that uh, in this next couple of years, the hardware is just going to become way more comfortable. Yes. Like I, I've even tried, like, you know, all the, all the talk about pancake lenses, I've tried headsets with those implemented and they are night and day difference compared to what I'm wearing right now as a daily driver with the good mic is the, the, the index. Um, so I think the combination, I, I think VR is in a place where they can actually innovate uh, pretty well over two years, except other companies are kind of doing very different than what Meta is doing. Meta is doing one single chip, but you hear these other companies are, they're working with uh, like AMD or their own custom silicon processes and they're packing in way stronger chips than what Meta is right now. So I think when Meta uh, starts getting on the ball on their own custom silicon, we'll see, again, another reason for them to improve much more in the, uh, the, the long term. It really sounds like Meta has decided to guinea pig the gamers to get to where they want to go. So they, they're going to, they're using, they've basically been using us for, you know, three or four years now to Bastards. basically set themselves up to, to become a, a workflow social, you know, uh, application and, and really not a game, not for gamers. I, I, I talk to a lot of people and uh, w one person, I'll just say I talked to a lot of people and, and the one reason that a lot of people at Facebook like Zuckerberg originally purchased Oculus is because it, a lot of people believe that they bought into VR because they saw it as the path to AR, first of all. Like, yeah, VR could be a big market, but a lot of these, these people, again, like, you, you, you hear Tim Cook of Apple, all he talks about is AR. He never mentions VR, even though technically the mixed reality device that they're working on is still technically a VR device. All these companies see a lot more profits, a lot more uh, benefits for consumers with AR, but because the technology can't get there yet, yeah, they're, gonna, they're going to try to release products for whatever market they can sell so they can continue the progresses to get to that dream. Um, and well, and well, I, I talk... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say about... It, there, there are multiple benefits for them taking that approach uh, mm -hmm. not the least of which is the fact that the software development space gets kind of a, a jump start here in experience developing um, you know 3d immersive applications and, and allows them to kind of hone and refine uh, new techniques that they're going to be able to use down the line in AR MR XR devices right no, absolutely. Um, and and, and I, I'm kind of glad that they're doing this uh, high-end and low-end model where they're going to push all the technology they can to the high-end because, you know, I talked to the supply chain. I, I uh, Just what you're saying about how you're kind of worried that they're pushing for the high-end right now, even though the low-end is clearly what allowed them to get so many sales. Well, the, the Quest 3 is coming out next year for sure. But talking to the supply chain, uh, every, every company, uh, Apple, uh, Meta, probably all the other ones, they're buying the cameras that they pack in these things in bulk. Uh, every headset takes like 14 to 16 cameras each. And when these cameras would normally be very expensive a year ago,
But because every single company, and these large companies are just buying more and more and more, the price is already dropping right now for these cameras. So now they're gonna be able to add more functionality quickly to the low end because the price per unit of those cameras, for example, are already, just from the high end existing, they're dropping for the next year's product. So it's, I think it's gonna be a, a very quick iterative from high end to low end over the, the, the period of two years that we're talking about. Cool, cool. Um, Crazy. Well, I don't want to do the whole uh, the whole thing right here in this little space, but I do want to ask you about a couple more things before we move on. And for those of you who don't know, Brad has agreed to kind of show us VR chat. We're all noobs to VR chat, and Brad here is a veteran. He's a creator in VR chat. Spends a lot of time here, so he, he's gracious enough to kind of show us uh, some cool stuff in here. Uh, yeah, the only really thing quick... I've actually ever done in here is uh, is Among Us. <laughs> it's the only thing I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, I haven't even done that. Like literally, it's this... very good. Uh, I can remember it was really it was really well done. Well, this is really well done. And for those of you who don't know, um, we're in a chessboard chess yeah. um, that we found in the Hogwarts Great Hall. So uh, it's all magic right now. Yeah, uh, magic wand even. Anyway, I wanted a couple of other things I wanted to. Uh, touch on with you before we kind of end this part of the conversation you, you mentioned Verifocal and Abrash and how he's been up here literally every year saying that you know we're five to seven years away from Verifocal he says that every year and it was just two or three weeks ago <laughs> same thing five to, to seven years away uh, I don't believe them Brad I think that they could do Verifocal today if they wanted to that Half Dome 3 prototype's been around for what three or four years now they could totally do that and I think it's going to be a pretty big game changer in uh, a lot of ways but it's not so flashy right it's not something that they can really sell to people uh, why do you think we don't have Verifocal coming in say like the Cambria and um, when do you think we're going to start to see this show up in consumer headsets so that's uh that's something that <laughs> Verifocal I'm glad you bring that up because that, that's been like I'm very big into researching displays and optics technologies. That's, those are like probably my, my two passions the most. When I, I'll literally pull up uh, white, white papers every day, add it to my Kindle and just read <laughs> all these white papers and figure out where this technology is because it's it's uh, it's amazing. Um, so the one thing I, I wanna mention about Arash, and this is what I hear from people that have either worked with him in the past or just known him personally in the past. Uh, he's very much a researcher type mind. You always have, and this is any large company, you always have researchers and productizers. Researchers always kind of go for that long shot <laughs> to where it's like, you know, they see something in the lab and they're just like, yeah, we're going to have that instantly, obviously. And then there's the product productizers that had to figure out, okay, what manufacturing lines could actually build this? What's the, the, the cost per unit that we could get out of it? What's the profit value? So yeah, you're, you're, you always have these two types of people at odds with each other. For Verifocal, though, um, I've done a lot of research on it. Basically, Verifocal relies on liquid crystal technology. And what's really good about liquid crystals is the fact that liquid crystal technology is actually slowly on the downturn. Actually, not slowly. It's actually, especially right now, uh, with the economy going down, all these companies that have spent so many years uh, perfecting their fab fabs, their, the, the, like China especially, um, getting to know how they can push LCD technology. Well, no one's selling LCD TVs. In fact, they are in such overstock that the, they're, they're trying to figure out, okay, how can we convert our fabs to make an actual profit again? They're literally losing money by just having these LCD fabs. Now, obviously there's a difference between L uh, LCD, which is a liquid crystal display, and a liquid crystal optic. But a lot of these things kind of do uh, go into each other. Um, there's a there's a university in Central Florida where I live, where a lot of research is done on this and making sure it's profitable. Um, I and 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 the one thing I should also note is even Hollow Cake. Uh, Hollow Cake. If you've seen all the articles about those super thin, like hollow, uh, the holographic optics, those kind of lenses are using a layer that are basically liquid crystal lenses already 
I believe every company is super focused on this technology. Apple, Meta, um, Valve especially. There's a whole company called Imagine Optics that was this huge, <laughs> this huge uh, yeah, I'm very drama aware. around. I'm very yeah, aware. yeah. It, but when it comes to making it into a product, I think, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm confident we might see it in like maybe three years in like an actual high-end product at this point. You think somebody does it before Meta? You think, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot of these companies, these suppliers uh, come from the East and we're seeing a big push from Eastern companies into the Western markets uh, trying to compete with Meta and I'm sure at some point surpass them. Uh, do you think we could see one of these uh, one of these companies bring us um, Verifocal before Meta puts it into a consumer product? I, I hate bringing up Apple because I, I know I know people have strong opinions about Apple, and I'm not much of an Apple user myself. But the one thing that they're known for is the fact that they can they they have so much control over the entire supply chain, even for their upcoming headset. Is any technology that they want, they end up usually funding factories full on to build all the machine machinery they need for something they think is valuable. We're seeing that uh, already with micro OLED displays. Everyone's saying that Apple is going to have, not not me, like everyone else who studies Apple way more than me, they're all <laughs> saying Apple is going to have 4K per eye micro OLED displays. And anyone you talk to normally, if you talk to Meta, they, they, they'll have micro OLED on their roadmap, but this year, late this year, they're not releasing a micro OLED headset, whereas Apple's apparently going to come in right out the gate early next year with this technology that a lot of people have been saying oh we can't get the supply chain to do because they can't so i think it is possible that someone might in the actually beat meta to it it wouldn't surprise me at all uh it wouldn't surprise me if apple with their gen 2 was looking into doing something like that it, it's again just trying to figure out how to market it to people how to get people understanding it's so important uh, another thing with verifocal is especially as people get older uh that verifocal actually becomes less important so it's just trying to balance all the benefits and we also need better eye tracking technology and there, there's a lot of question marks rather than the actual lenses itself right it would solve the uh the whole legality thing for kids and being able to have kids in headsets because that's the the problem right they say it's damaging their eyes but if you had verifocal then they, that wouldn't be a problem anymore because uh, even though i don't know that there's really any damage being done but i don't i don't know the, if there is or not yeah it, it, is. what it is is uh, i forget what the the technical term is vergence something accommodation, a, conflict. accommodation yeah so kids uh are, are constantly developing their their visual system up until the age 12 which is why we always see that be the 13, uh yeah. the recommended um the recommended age for people to start using vr there uh the, the companies are basically afraid that if you know developing eyes spend too much time in headsets that they're not going to properly uh, be able to develop uh, their their, ba uh, their ability to focus at different focal depths and that, that's knows, the reason why very focal yeah right 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 yeah. I also heard some stuff related to uh, the fact that when children are developing they are still trying to learn balance and everything and if these young children spend a lot of time in VR that actually help uh, hurts the development of that aspect and that doesn't even really have to do with the actual eye strain that's a whole totally different system right. related to locomotion if you have kids doing this all the time and learning how to stand straight doing that just just uh, artificial locomotion then they're not actually learning it makes sense yeah. it does make sense yeah. actually all right convince he convinced me mash we need to change the rule for for uh, and <laughs> yeah. let everybody for the facebook group 30. 35 or older that's it no i think i, I think 35 i think at least 35 to use a headset i think your facebook group should start letting people bash uh people for letting their kids in headsets now yeah that's what uh, i'm saying we should it, just shut it we should just shut everything down yeah and no more moderation <laughs> we're just gonna make just it let it go willy-nilly yeah. absolutely uh one more thing brad you know we mentioned kind of that um vr is in a really good place today because of you know, a focus on gaming and a focus on affordability, accessibility, and how the, the next gen kind of seems to be taking a hard step away from that. And it makes you wonder, well, what, why can't we have a, a middle ground? But there is a middle ground, right? There's PSVR 2 
that's coming that's going to mix kind of in a little bit of the next gen technology and we assume is going to be affordable accessible and obviously 100 percent or at least 95 percent gaming and entertainment focused uh, we are very excited here about psvr2 uh, and i know you're a deckard guy and we're going to get into deckard a little bit later uh, are you as excited for PSVR 2 and what it means for the market as we are? Uh, I think Meta should be terrified. I, I think I'm as excited for it as Meta is terrified of their <laughs> gaming against it. I, I'm totally excited for it. Um, I'm still a gamer. I know, I know, I know I'm like kind of playing devil's advocate of, of why it's okay for these companies not to focus on gaming. But at the end of the day, I, I mean, I do spend most of my time in VR headset and gaming because that's, that's all you can do right now. And I, I, I do agree that PSVR 2 is going to be that middle ground that a lot of people are going to be looking for. And, and maybe that's why Meta is not really focusing on the gaming, including for their Quest 2 that it's already released and right. was originally marketed for gaming. Because no matter what, uh, gamers, just, just any gamer, if they look at <laughs> the, 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 the port of Resident Evil 4 on Quest and compare it to the remake <laughs> of Resident Evil 4 uh, that has VR content or whatever for PSVR 2, it's going to be hard for a lot of people to want to invest, I think, in the difference. Yeah, I, I said that recently. Like, you know, at least to some extent, it could be one of the factors uh, in why they're stepping back right now, right? Because they can't compete on that stage with Sony. Sony, th they're masters. At, at gaming and entertainment and um you know that's kind of what the uh the oculus slash meta platform has been built upon so it makes sense for them to kind of you know take a step back let let the markets mature and then you know prepare and and step back in when the time's right so uh yeah we're, we're very very excited for psvr2 uh, why, why do you think well why do you think it's not cut well let me ask you this you didn't initially buy into the uh, the projected release date of uh, 2023. Uh, have mm -hmm. you accepted that now? Do you do you believe that it is in fact going to be next year before we get it? Yeah. So the issue I have is uh, I don't have any contacts within Sony. Uh, my contacts at that time that I was not believing it were mostly from a large Asian country. And apparently what the big holdup was <laughs> for components was a different Asian country that I also have no contacts with. Right. I'm not gonna say more into that, but um, I finally understood the full picture, what's slowing things down. And yeah, I, I do believe, and I understand why it's not this year. So you think it's supply chain related, the, uh, or do you think it's like contracts and, and things like that, like contractual agreements? No, I, th I think it was definitely supply chain for sure. Cool. Do you think it was a supply chain for the PlayStation VR 2 or was a supply chain still for getting the PlayStation 5s out? Because I always uh, had the thought that they, it was to them, it was more that they didn't want to put a peripheral out, peripheral out for a system that 90% of the people still can't get. I never really uh, believed that side personally, um, especially as now it, it, it doesn't even matter because uh, the, the stock situation for ps5s have gotten extremely better in the past yeah, two much weeks much better much like, better. ridiculous better so uh, i never everything. really thought yeah everything everything uh graphics cards for peace this is another thing pc vr might actually become more uh, uh more of a benefit in the next year because of the <laughs> every there's there's a t there's a flood of uh graphics cards coming on the market used ones and yeah. all these uh new cards coming out this next year they're not going to be able to sell above MSRP because there's just a flood of pre-owned cards from the mining crash and everything. Uh, but that's a whole, that's a whole other discussion. One right. thing I want to say about PSVR 2, and I don't want to go again too much um, about it from the supply chain's perspective, but even though they're using standard OLED, and I talk a lot about OLED on silicon or OLED micro displays, which are a subset. It's, it's not what PSVR right. 2 is using. Uh, despite that, those displays are using a very special process to make and do you know that, do you do you know and you don't have to answer this if it's privileged information do you know if like psvr gen 1 used uh rgb oled it wasn't pentile um which is why it such, had such a, a high a long shelf life and high quality 
Uh, do we know if the Gen 2 OLEDs are going to be RGB or, or Pentile? Uh, I don't know about PSVR 2, but I can say from every other, um, at least from the micro OLED side, everyone is doing RGB stripe right now for VR. So I think right. it's like a standard for headsets, uh, especially because you you do not want the the bit the big benefit of RGB stripe is it makes the pixel gap right. way less noticeable. So pentile is just it'd it's be a big a no step back, right? Part. It'd be a big yeah. step back. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. Um, we'll we'll pick it back up in a few minutes. Talk a little bit about Valve and what they're doing, because uh, we know you like talking about that, and everyone likes <laughs> to hear about it. Uh, but l let's uh, let's let's check out VR chat. Show us what we've been missing, Bradley, please. Yeah, let me let me find a, a new world for us to visit, and then we'll we'll explore nice. that. Okay. Ooh, District Roboto. So I noticed, Brad, that I loaded straight into it this time so every time you visit one of these worlds does it kind of just install it to your machine yep yep it uh it, it does it has a there's a cache that will keep worlds and avatars and stuff and if you ever want to clear your cache there is a setting for that so awesome you... where's yep. my wand it does not transfer between <laughs> worlds oh my god dude but i check... had that like for an hour but check this out roots <laughs> check this out double jump we can double oh, jump nice. in here. Check this out. I, I can use the cat. I don't know how, but <laughs> get over here, kitty. That's kind of nasty. Hey, they have, a, uh, use the they have, a, uh, they have a, a Tony tape deck over here. A Tony? <laughs> Tony. Well, how Sony, do I use Tony. the cat? They won't... Oh, wait, okay. It's meowing. Oh, okay. Meow. Yep, so uh, come out here, everyone. Go ahead and uh, walk through that door. Like literally walk right through it. <laughs> yep, just walk through it. There's no doorknobs. Nice. Hey, there's a a robot over here. He looks very down downtrodden on his luck. Wow. This reminds me of that uh, that that experience I did. Um, Look at the water you, on the ground with the robots and the little girl. What was the name? Of that? Go in any of these buildings. It looks like, huh? There's the a lot of them. A lot any, of them uh, yeah, any of them that have this arrows, you can you can enter. This guy looks happy. Is this the food place actually? No, right? Yeah. No, it's not. Oh no, it's a balcony. Yeah, there's no, a, there's not. a few of these balconies, and uh, there's some cool stuff, and there's collectibles too. Like if you find these things here. You can pick them up, and you get a skin. Is that right, Bradley? If you find them all, yeah. If you if you collect enough, you can buy a, an avatar, and you can become that avatar and bring it to whatever world with with hey, you. Buddy. That's cool. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> this robot's crying or something. <laughs> did you make him cry? I did make him cry. No? I'm gonna make him cry again. Don't do it, bro. I'm hungry now. Look at this hot dog and this. Crappy, whatever food he's serving. Never mind, I'm not hungry. It does not, not look very appetizing. Zip around here, guys. Check this out. Wow, look at that. Oh, wow. Man. Beautiful, huh? So so when we, when we were in here earlier, I was literally out on the street looking at a puddle, thinking to myself, man, these guys do a really great job with reflections and water. <laughs> and then I walk around the corner and I see this. I'm like, geez. Yeah, right? <laughs> With all these lights. Really impressive. Yeah, it is. Very cool, man. Yeah. Some of the best probably VR level designers spend all their time making stuff in VR chat. So it's it's a ton of stuff like this. So how much of this is just like um I don't know, kinda of, kinda of pre rendered stuff and how much of it is done by hand by the creators? Oh, dude, a lot of this is done by hand for the creator, 100%. Like, uh, a lot of it. Uh, especially this creator. This this creator is, like, just very well-talented. And he has some help uh, as well. Oh, don't jump. Don't. I'm, oh. <laughs> are are, are oh, these God. people, like, oh. um, classically <laughs> trained? Or are they, like, aspiring game devs? Or are these people who are, like, self-taught enthusiasts? Mm -hmm. Most people I've seen that are like this um, are self-taught, and wow, that's incredible. It, it all they're they're usually self-funded through Patreon most of the time. So people already live in their lives 
just doing this already in VR. Yeah, I would love to get into something like that, but I can only imagine how much time it would take. <laughs> and I have a full-time job and, I, you know, I've got a family. Like it would, I would just have to like never sleep again. And that's not even, you know, considering the YouTube channel and all the stuff we're doing for that. Just get uh, a Groundhog's Day situation for a few years and you'll be set. <laughs> I'm out as an expert. Man. I need the elder one back so I can slow time down. That's right. <laughs> like what do, you make stuff like this. do you think he ever catches anything? I don't think so. Oh man, what a horrible existence! You just, like never catch. <laughs> would the fish be a robotic fish? Or I, I think it real? would be, but would it get shocked in the water? Right, let's Question. find a. Let's see here. I really want to find that cafe. I know there's. I know there's one around here. It's... It is cool. Well, it's art, isn't it? It's like. Brad, have you ever been to like the Museum of Other Realities, Brad? Mm-hmm. Yep. This is like that to the next level. I feel <laughs> like it's like the the thing that really makes uh, the Museum of Other Realities special, other than you know the museum itself, which has a really good sense of presence and makes you feel like you're oh. in a museum. But the art, it, it you know, it's awesome that you can go into it. And I kind of mm -hmm. feel like this stuff that you're showing us here is kind of like that. To the to the nth degree, you know. I need. I really need to bring you to. Uh, oh my God! What is that called? Let me look something up real quick. What you? Uh, sure, sure, sure. There's something I really think will blow your mind if I can remember the name of it. Oh, I can eat the sushi. Then grab it. Kind of, can you stack it? I wonder if uh, Tribeca is still going no, on. Did we, did we miss it? I think we might no, have No, Wes, we missed that like <laughs> by a week or two, I think. I think it's long gone. I think. Maybe we could be wrong. As I remember, we were supposed to go into it and it never happened. Yeah, it lasted for two or three weeks. It was supposedly. Yeah. It may be too late now. Okay. I think I might have found it. Love it. They have ashtrays here. <laughs> <laughs> we go back in time or something? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, ashtrays in restaurants. Of course, I've never been to a robotic one, so. <laughs> you know, I want to bring you guys to a, one real quick. If I can, let's see if it actually pops up. Sure. Yeah. Oh my God, they updated it recently. Okay, this one, I, I, if it's the one I think it is, and I'm pretty sure it is, this one will probably impress you all. Well, I guarantee it because I am very easily impressed. So. Go on in. Yeah. All right, welcome to my boat. Oh, this is cool. Ruth, Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Thieves. This is yeah. much better. Much better boat than the other boat. <laughs> oh, you've seen nothing yet. This is huge. I think I you know who else likes it when it's huge? Uh, yeah, she does. <laughs> so you can ma message the creator on Discord with the little thing. All right, right everyone, I'm going to go ahead and start it. Oh, that's cool. Epilepsy warning. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so this is, uh, I'm just going to tell you, this is what. VR concert should be. Wow. Oh yes, this is awesome. That is cool. Honestly, just enjoy the next like. There, there, there's multiple uh, sets, and they're all really unique so just enjoy yeah, this, it this is the kind of stuff that that the wave did like the wave yeah this is probably why the wave went out of business because people just went to vr chat <laughs> <laughs> probably Look at that. it's a portal uh oh we're gonna go to the portal room the stargate Yes. 
If the FX ever make you feel uncomfortable, you can turn around and it's the way it lets you. Oh, yeah. Stuff. No oh, worries, yeah, man. Ooh. I yeah. think we've all got our legs fully developed here. Oh, Just yeah. making sure. The earth is cool looking behind us. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, super trippy. It almost reminds me of level in like Synth Riders, right? <laughs> yeah. Like one of those experiences in Synth Riders. Wow. Now I know why they had to put the epilepsy warning in there. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Oh shit, what did I fall down in here? Oh, you're in the hole. <laughs> I was in the hole. That's crazy. Could take us to a new location once it gets to this song. Yeah, when they first re uh, launched this world, they pretty much filled this whole boat with ravers. So everyone was like, "With people, this. That yeah, is with people." Awesome. That would be intense. Yep. And usually everyone has a uh, so there's something called audio sync where people can make the textures on their clothing and stuff like sync with the music of the world. Oh, with move the oh. music. And yeah, so everyone's like flashing with the music and everything. It, it gets really, really crazy. Their hair will glow with it. How would it run with that many people in here? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, people don't, people get used to it, but yeah. Yeah. And especially because usually, like, if, if people are doing this, they also all like everyone will have full eye tracking as well. So right. you, you see everyone just like, yeah, it can get a little little uh, crazy. <laughs> I love stuff like this, man. Which reminds me, there's a there's a new Visionarium out that I haven't checked out yet. Yeah, it should be taking us to the next Whoa, part very soon. So, um, I assume that there's somewhere in my home or in my menu that has my history in it so I can pull this up easily? Yep, if you go to World and scroll down, there should be recently visited, or recent, it's just called recent. There'll be, how many menus down? Like almost seven or eight, oh, a lot of them down. It's like your, it's actually like your 11th menu on yeah, your so World. Yeah, I, I found it, yeah. It's cool, man. Just waiting for, Wait for the next part spot because there's, this was the this, this is like a world where it's like a cert whoa, um, whoa look at that. <laughs> yeah so this world uh they they update it every few months with new track oh, wow. so this is like the first one they made and they just and the creator just kept getting better and better at this so like the further you go um wow. there's just like a much newer interest so so now we're returning back to Earth and there should be a whole shit of the Earth. <laughs> no! Oh line. shit, I fell down in the hole. Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go, the island. Yes, this is what I remember. I think the track on this island is probably way... Oh, it's my favorite. You know what the sad thing is? I'm I'm pretty yeah. much oh. already sold on VR chat. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you've I'm already you. sold me on it. I I, I know it, it. Literally, uh, everyone's first impression of VR chat is always the the children. But again, once you find the right person to guide you through everything, it you see this stuff. Oh, is it Asgard's wrath? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, an episode of Survivor is about to start. 
<laughs> we arrived at our sacred destination. In a world. <laughs> By a glorious road. <laughs> Paved with dedication. You now it kind of feels like Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, right? Stay true to the roots of our endeavor. Defeat never. Defeat never. Hmm. Victory forever. <laughs> Finds us, though we've only just begun. Follow the ways of death. Come one. <laughs> death. <laughs> like a it's a laser light show. Yeah, man. Defcon One must be awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. Defcon One. <laughs> Disney's getting weird anyway with all their that their park every fucking seems like that every t time you turn around they're changing something getting rid of a pass here or i don't know man you you're there more than i am mash so is this the thing you were yeah, telling me about earlier that the guy made this is a different one actually different one, um the other one i Ooh. so w which one was the, the it seems like two of you are actually big fans of disney right uh, yeah, I, yes, that's I, right disney. my thing is i would love to go t to a virtual disney world and go on all the rides. I think it would be amazing. And I don't know why we aren't, we don't have that. Yeah. Yet. Like I'd pay for the ticket. You know what I mean? I'd pay 40 bucks to go all day. You so know? this ride is fully functional and is completely recreated, uh, based on no way. original audio and everything. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, can, do you think you can get your daughter to go into this match? <laughs> Maybe. She loves VR. Uh, yeah. one thing, one thing I wanted to mention, I, I don't know how long, uh, so, so I was, so, uh, we were earlier, I was, I, was, I was guiding him through some other worlds to give him uh, a little bit of a hint, but uh, I was with another world creator that was with us, and they're working on a recreation of Journey into Imagination, the old Figment ride yeah. that like closed 20 years ago. And he like literally has the original audio, and he like no literally watched just VHS videos so he can recreate the actual ride, and it's like fully rideable. Unfortunately, he's not done yet, so I, I was hoping to bring us there um, instead, but it, it's still private. But yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm a big I'm I'm super big on preservation in VR. It's like yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna yes. destroy something in the real world, just build it in VR before you destroy it. Then you exactly. preserve it forever. Here. Yeah, yeah, forever. So I yeah, want there's... to do the Maelstrom in VR. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like yeah. one one of these days, even this ride's not going to exist. So no, well, it's already in, in California. It's already different. Yeah, you, yeah. It's not this anymore. Now it's the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, ride. Exactly. You, and you, well, I just think being able to have, go to like Haunted Mansion or any of those rides, Car Pirates of the Caribbean, it'd be so cool, right? Someone I know someone's working on uh, Haunted Mansion right now. That would be oh, amazing. Nice. Nice. Yeah, because have My you ever, ever tried to watch one of the YouTube 3D videos? Uh, they're never yeah. good because yeah. it's good. dark inside and. Yeah. My my wife. Oh, turn up your world volume all, all the way, by the way. Yeah, my, my wife is such a huge. You fan say of turn it off Disney. or turn it up? I turn Disney it up all the way. Or... Oh, okay. Well, you know, Disney World. Uh, yeah. Theme park. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like the uh, oh, actual yeah. audio they play in the lobby when you enter the building. The spooky. 
Jazz. <laughs> Where's my line? Like half of the experience is <laughs> standing in line. All right, come on in here quickly because the one's open. Yeah. Nice. Okay. All right. So we got we have to go. <laughs> it forces you to to do the pre-show, which is uh. Which know. is cool though. That's like they, they make you do that too in the uh, yep. in the real ride. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of I gotta go check out that Twilight Zone game tonight. Yeah. I was just thinking that too. Oh yeah. Tonight, I thought we were going after the fall tonight. 1939, amid the glitz and the glitter of a bustling young movie town at the height of its golden age, the Hollywood Tower Hotel was. Oh, you can see through the wall. Right. <laughs> I'm mostly slamming my head because I've done this too many times. <laughs> I feel like I don't want to do it again. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Have you, ever, have you ever ridden this ride, Bless? No, no, I've never been to Disney World, period. Oh, yeah. Roots, you've done it, right? What's that? You've done this ride, right? Oh, yeah, I've met many times. We used to go all the time when I lived there in Florida. There. If you dare. What I always loved about Tor so I live in Florida still like my whole life and it's always funny because people are always trying to smush their way to the TV. Most people yeah, right. don't know when they're tourists that the door opens here. So I, <laughs> like no one's ever over here. So if you like walk over here when it starts, you just get in front of line. It's, it's like the haunted mansion, right? Everybody rushes to the yeah, one yeah. side, and you just stay stand by the door you came in and yeah, exactly. You know. All right, so when we do enter this uh, elevator, you will have to click with your trigger on a seat. Uh, do not click anything else till the ride is over because you might fall out and oh, it'll suck. Oh, God. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to fall out. Well, are you sure? And watch the, the things going oh, down. Look at that. And that's the sound effects they actually play when the, in the ride, too, when the elevator is coming down. Wait. Oh my god. They're I recommend the back, honestly. Do you really? Yeah. Just find yeah. a seat, click on it, and just stay tight. We got this. You are the passengers in a most uncommon elevator about to ascend into your very own episode of The Twilight Zone. Oh my god.
friendly word of warning. Something you won't find in any guidebook. The next time you check into a deserted hotel on the dark side of Hollywood, make sure you know just what kind of vacancy you're filling. Or you may find yourself a permanent resident of the Twilight Zone. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, and they also took a ride photo. Oh, no, oh, man, that's so cool. They did a pretty good job of capturing the amusement park vibe. Mm -hmm. Wes, why couldn't you sit next to us? Was there a problem? There a <laughs> well, he told me not to move. Homer, Homer's a little grabby. <laughs> All right. This looks cool. Yep, so this is uh, that one world with all the robots and then like that harbor. Uh, same creator. Look at so. that. Look to, this is there uh, underneath the sea. Mm-hmm. And it's got uh, multiple... I'm going to do the same tour I, <laughs> I gave Wes. So right. come over here where the dancing anime girl is and uh, just walk on <laughs> through here. <laughs> Oh, look at that. So, um, I was I was talking about earlier how VR chat literally becomes a lifestyle for people, like genuinely. Um, so a lot of these worlds, you'll always find like actual. Uh, when did that close? Okay, actual beds and stuff. Because um, people will sleep in VR chat. I'm not even kidding. Like there are literally worlds where people will put, somehow wear their headset and go to bed. They'll hang out in like hot tubs and just talk to friends all night. Uh, wow. Yep. Like when we finally do get to the point where the the headsets are are comfortable enough to where you could wear them like that, like I could totally relax in a place like this, you know? Yeah, uh, because all these worlds, they like when near the beds, they usually have like a sleep mode where it like dims the entire world so like it gets peaceful and like especially with all these jellyfish floating around it's, oh, yeah. it's kind of like a lucid dream a little bit um yeah, there's one more section of this world we can go to real quick and then we can figure out where I mean, we want to literally if we could get something like the vibe flow like i love the vibe flow mm -hmm. the way it feels and when i'm wearing it but it's, it's, it doesn't do enough for me but um, yeah but if we get to that that's portability oh man Oh, the NDAs. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> soon, <laughs> I know, guys. I, like, I know. I know. Sleeping in VR won't be such a such a joke in like the next year for sure. People will have headsets. That'll definitely be worth do it. Oh yeah, people love drinking while in VR chat. M many many worlds have virtual bars just so they oh, can feel yeah. immersed when they're drinking in real life with their friends. So, uh, yeah. Makes sense, actually. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to drink alone. Nope, so exactly, exactly. All by myself. Yep. I drink alone. Oh, <laughs> uh, I feel like <laughs> there's there's also strip clubs in VR chat. Oh, well, there's a pool table up here. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Fully working. If and uh, the, this oh, is yeah. you can change the mirror resolution up here. Some people, they call them mirror dwellers, or they just want to sit in front of a mirror the entire time. Uh, yeah, I know people like that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, 2023, Brad, we've got mm -hmm. we've got PSVR 2. Mm -hmm. um, we've got Quest 3. These are pretty much all but confirmed at this point. Mm -hmm. We've got yep. Apple... Whatever they're gonna call it, A R X R M R. Mm -hmm. It makes doesn't it make perfect sense that the, Valve Valve isn't gonna to want to be last, right? Like they're gonna to want to get out there <laughs> before these people are at least with them, right? That's how I feel. They they seem to, especially because I I'm always biased, but um. <laughs> When it comes to, like, the fact that they were so kind of kind of cocky the way they announced the Index during, like, the yeah, Quest I remember. 2, the Quest I remember. 1 thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think Valve likes to just let big things slide by. 
And I really do feel like this next year is, especially for the high-end segment, where Valve is very serious, and they're not serious about the low-end, they're always serious by the high-end. For me, I feel like they would just definitely want to have something out uh, or in the same time period. Or at least and make like, an you announcement, know, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the stuff that... <laughs> I say this a lot, and, and people... Uh, think I'm lying, but Valve literally leaks stuff out on purpose. Like they just oh, they, they sure. throw that stuff out there. That that's like they, they literally have a whole hour long talk uh, by a man named Robin Walker. He's like one of the highest developers at uh at Valve, and he has a whole talk from Steam Dev Days many years back about how they do this. Their organic marketing strategy is if they're close to, if they're close to things, they want to leak out a ton of stuff. And I really do feel the, the last data mine I did was just one of those moments where I was like, okay, Valve is getting very confident, at least in the part of where they are with Deckard. Like, they don't throw all these menus. That I literally pull, I can literally pull them up right now. I have them, <laughs> I have them still activated. Like, I, I can pull up the whole system and enter men menu and stuff. Like, all these systems, they're putting it out to the public betas. They're not removing these systems from the public betas after I report on them. So, I don't know. I, I feel it's not that far away for an announcement, but... Uh, well, uh, we're pretty Valve confident. We're, we're pretty confident, right? Well, let me, hold on. Let me turn this world music down a little bit. It's yep. it's, it's a little intrusive. Yoink. So, I feel like we're pretty confident about certain things with the uh, uh, codename Deckard headset. Like, yeah. the, the focus about it, uh, the, or its focus, or its selling point, is that it's standalone PC VR, right? We're pretty confident that that's what they're going for. There's going to be a, a, an onboard uh, dedicated processor, a couple, right? A couple of different processors on board, we think. Yes, yeah, so um, here's the thing. I personally believe that if Deckard were to announce, they wouldn't have to do the entire uh, PC on your head on release because the way they seem to be very interested in doing it, uh, I believe they're going to have kind of like a modularity component to it over time. Uh, I believe the base Deckard will have like a ARM type chip, like a, something like a Qualcomm SoC. And... That chip will be purely focused on reprojection, tracking, all these other systems, uh, do camera data for like eye tracking and stuff. Um, and I think right off the bat, they might not even release the x86 APU. Like as a, I believe that would be an attachment. So you, so uh, you think on. that the, that that modular strap design that that you had talked about a few months back, you legit think that that's the way that they're going to go with it then? Yeah, I, I do think that uh, Valve is going to want to focus. <laughs> I've talked to some people and I started thinking a certain way. Um, but yeah, like uh, I believe that for people that have PCs, like huge rigs, they're not going to be totally satisfied if they're forced to be. Because even, even, even with the AMD APUs, which are getting better, um, there was some leaks about a upcoming APU. That's supposed to be a Van Gogh successor called. Uh, it's right now just it's called Little Phoenix, and it's gonna have um, it's, it's gonna have uh, was it RDNA three cores and Zen four cores, both CPU and GPU, which is gonna be at least fifty percent to hundred times uh, fifty to hundred percent greater than the Van Gogh chip in the Steam Deck. And if you combine those chips together, the the uh, the Qualcomm SoC with this chip, you already get way better than just the XR2 and the Quest 2. Very similar concept to what Apple has been remo uh, heavily rumored. I would say it's about confirmed at this point. Apple is uh, going to use basically like an A14 type chip, which is usually what they put in their iPhones. And they're going to uh, offload all the camera data, all the pretty much the same thing I just said for the Decker that the Qualcomm SoC is doing. And their big chip that they're putting in the Apple headset is the M2. But I, I think Valve is uh, more so, they're a small company. I think they're going to want to focus on their uh, enthusiast grade that have the PCs. And when you plug a Deckard in, or if you connect it wirelessly to a PC, your strong one, it's still going to do all the offloading and processing the same way as if you had 
the AMD APU head strap. It's basically the same concept. You have a mini PC in the back of your head and it connects either a wire or whatever right. to your headset. Um, so you think and, that and it, basically um, that PC gamers with strong rigs aren't going to want to make the concessions that come from the, uh, the, the onboard processor. No matter how good it is, it'll never be quite as good as a PC because of the modular nature of the PC itself. So you think that maybe there's going to be like a, some kind of uh, Y gig or something built into a head strap as an option uh, or as a, uh, as a, uh, an alternative to the onboard chip. Exactly. Like, yeah. um, and, and, and why Valve would do this uh, as well, because again, I was saying they're a small company. Uh, they do a lot of great R&D for VR. They, they've been doing it for years. Uh, people think that they give up, but they're far from that. But because they're a small company with like 300 to 400 employees only, uh, if they did this modularity system, that benefits all their product line. Everything that they do for the Steam Deck transitions over to this headset. Anything that they work on for this headset uh, compute unit can benefit the Steam Deck line because they're developing the software and hardware over time. And if you are interested in sacrificing the total house power or horsepower of like a strong PC that most gamers use already today in a VR headset, well, then you can buy the compute unit. And in a couple years, when they have access to I don't know, AMD's next generation chip, they can still iterate just the back. And then when they want to switch the R&D side to the actual, you know, the visual components, then they can focus their efforts on that. So I think it's a win-win for Valve, and I, I really I really do think this is the way they're going to, to do it. Um, it wouldn't even surprise... This is, like, this is like speculation, but because I focus on their patents, they're very... So many of their, even their Steam Deck patents are very big on modularity. So they're, Valve is trying to explore all these options of how to make all their hardware products modular, uh, customizable and stuff. So it wouldn't surprise me if like later down the line, if there was a Steam Deck 2 or whatever, that compute unit that you're plugging to the back of your headset, what if you could just slot that into a gamepad that has a screen? So it's like a multifunctional thing that, you know, it's basically the same concept at that point. Um, it, that's just where I see, uh, that's why I see Valve doing right now, for so sure. Do you, do you think this modularity is going to be the big selling point, like the shiny thing that convinces Joe Consumer to, to go pick this thing up? Or do you think they're even at all concerned about picking up average consumers? Do you think that maybe they're just going to focus on the enthusiast space and and you know that modularity would be enough right for, for people like us so i think the so i think they're going to focus first on enthusiasts for sure i think whatever they're packing in the front with displays and optics they're definitely gonna be enthusiasts they're gonna be something that every pc vr gamer is gonna want um ars technica the people that confirmed that i was insane about deckard they had sources that saying that valve was looking into technology similar to what Meta was for their Hollow Cake. They literally linked to the Hollow Cake 1 white paper. All right. And like all these things, and I, I, I found a lot more connections between them and their interest in like high resolution uh, displays and stuff. So I think the front, the, 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 the base part is going to be very enthusiast. So when you're selling something at like $1,000 or more, well, you still need a PC. And I think this is where... Valve might look into the, the the benefit of selling this compute unit. If they sell the compute unit for maybe like three hundred dollars, like the Steam Deck, well then, that and, and and promise that they're gonna have support in ways that that thing can run your front device. Then it's it's very same to how a PSVR two requires um, right, right. a PS five, uh, and, and even the Steam Deck. Like there's the Steam Deck's selling incredibly well. And all it's really doing is playing games on Steam at not the extremities that a lot of enthusiast PC gamers are used to, but it's actually introducing a lot more gamers that have been wanting to get into PC gaming in an affordable price point. So I think that's where the strategy is going. Valve, at the end of the day, is more concerned with pushing Steam more than selling hardware. Yeah, um, 
So uh, let me ask you this. So, so obviously, yep. do, do you th- obviously you probably think this thing's going to have the micro OLED displays in it, and uh, you know that's going to be great, obviously for resolution and color depth and all of that. Yep. Is is Pimax the only company that's going to focus on field of view? Because I, you know, I don't need two hundred degrees, but it would be cool if we could, uh, you know, push one forty or one fifty on a next-gen device we've been waiting a while now no one seems to care about fov mm-hmm. except for consumers you don't think you need 200 until you use it all the time right then you want it you want it all the time i mean you really do so the one thing i i, I get the why i mean another reason i use mandex is i like that fov that it gives it's still a lot higher than you get like a quest 2 or even rift or whatever um there are ways to actually increase FOV without having ginormous displays. And those are the ways I think Valve is going to do. Uh, recently, I wrote an article on Cambria uh, where I released some new, even more new uh, cat images of what's being pro- mass produced uh, like right now uh, for Cambria. And what they're doing, so displays are usually like, like you know, they're re- rectangular for each eye um, right. and, and like aligned straight. What a lot of these companies are doing now is they realize we can just counter rotate the displays to where it's more of like a like a like a like a kind of like a a diamond almost to right. get a higher vertical FOV. And all they need to do is just oh we just need to we just need to have the software reprojection to account for that rotation. In fact, even in in everyone that's running Steam VR right now, there's code in Steam VR that is already set up for that feature. Valve is I added that late last year. And uh, Cambria is going to have those ro- rotated displays. Uh, and then there's also uh, the both the Pimax and the Index have canted displays, which is different than rotated. There's like, they're tilted. Uh, they're they're kind of tilted like, uh, actually like more like this. And uh, canting allows you to get a little bit more horizontal FOV out of your displays. And you can actually combine that, that counter rotation that gets the vertical FOV and the uh, and and the canting together at the same time to get way more. Um, so micro OLED, uh, the companies that m- <laughs> there, there's a reason why I focus on one company. If, if uh, in, in a lot of my videos and like that 4K display, I did a whole interview with that company. They're the only company that uh, has managed to show off a display greater than 1.3 inches diagonal. And display size has a lot to do with FOV. Um, optics are generally not magnifying uh, displays too much. You can magnify uh, displays a lot larger uh, with pancake lenses, but usually the more you magnify, the more optical artifacting your, your, your edges will look very discolored or just look pretty poor. So this company, um, and the reason why most micro OLED companies are 1.3 inches diagonal is because they're built on silicon. And uh, silicon is uh, a lithography process to create all the transistors on an OLED uh, or, or uh, uh, it's a silicon chip. And for each, uh, the max diagonal for each chip in one step, they call it, is 1.3 inches. But this company that has <laughs> Steamboat on a test board and, ha- and, I, and has a lot of I can, I can go into an hour of all the, the <laughs> connections between this company and Valve, but like they managed to make a 2.1 inch diagonal display with stitching technology and working with the foundry to develop displays that are super high resolution, micro OLED, but also large enough to get a much higher FOV. And I know people want like Pimax, Pimax FOV, that's like the dream for everyone. But uh, the reality is, the lar- th- th- they're getting FOV in a very easy way because they just have giant wide displays with uh, widened optics. But if you want stuff like Verifocal, for example, one reason why Verifocal is also pretty difficult is the the larger you make those liquid crystal lenses, the much slower they get, and it's like a really big curve. So. Everyone's kind of in the, these big companies. If they want verifocal, they're not going to be targeting that huge FOV or those huge lenses because it's 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 just not going to be a good experience for verifocal and like all these other features. And then you think about well, everything is turning standalone 
right? Everyone wants standalone headsets. Right, right. Well, that's another issue with like the Pimax system where you are culling a lot less of your, a lot less of the environment. So that's a lot more graphics processing. So basically what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of cool ways <laughs> to have smaller headsets that get bigger FOB by just doing some interesting tricks. Um, it's just, FOV is going to take probably the back seat. No, we're not going to get Pimax FOV anytime soon in a small headset. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I, and again, Pimax is kind of an extreme case. I, under, I understand that most people aren't going to want to wear something like that, you know, for any kind of an ex extended period of time. No matter how, you know, good they do with the strap, it's going to get heavy. Um, but man, you know, 140, 150, I feel like hopefully, hopefully is doable in the next few years because I feel like, you know, I mean, even right now wearing the G2, which has got a decent field of view, it's still binoculars, man. And, and mm -hmm. people don't realize it because we're used to it, but that, that's one of the big limiting factors in, you know, things that are still tethering us to uh, actual reality. So It'd be great if if we could just bring it out a little bit more. It would be, make a big difference, I think. I I think Valve is still going to at least meet the the index uh, FOV at least. Um, but again, they're they're they they the only reason I learned about the counter rotation originally, uh, the concept of it. No one no one talked about counter rotating panels like on YouTube. But I found the patent that Valve was awarded about this whole concept. I was like. Oh, that makes sense. And then I saw mirrors, uh, the Mirrors Lake concept from Meta, and I was like, if you look closely at those, uh, that concept, they're they're doing that as well. They're counter rotating, rotating displays. And then finally, <laughs> I got the new CAD image uh, of uh, Cambria, where they're also doing the same thing. So yeah, these companies are not tr like, they're not gonna get the huge FOVs. They they might reach that point eventually, um, but it's it's still. You go back to that meta, uh, what the, the visual Turing test, and the four right. most important things they said. One of those things was not FOV because no, no, if right. you add more FOV, all of those four things that they introduce, that they they're all ruined basically. All, all four things. You get more optical distortion. You get less pixels per degree. You have uh, more troubles with varifocal, and um, well, well, brightness. That's that's a whole other situation yeah. so uh the uh moral of the story is buy stock and pimax man <laughs> they're the only ones right <laughs> i'm um, very curious in general about um like like i i i i i uh i think when people try more comfortable headsets that are very high resolution in like the very near future um even though it might not be the pimax i'm very curious if people are going to still go to pimax like even the pimax crystal kind of went against their normal huge yeah. wide FOV stance and they're going more for the the resolution so uh, you have I to think, wonder why Pimax is doing that right I think people will go comfort like myself yeah. included I like half the time I'm if I'm not in VR it's because I don't want to have a big fucking headset on <laughs> and it's hot and it's not comfortable and you know what I mean and you're limited and you you go into like you could play a flat game for ten hours and be fine. You go into VR four or five, you come out feeling like you got wiped out, you know? Because I, I gotta it just... say though, the the Pimax though, the weight of the Pimax is not an issue because weight wise, it's not much different than the Valve Index. The problem with the Pimax is because it's so wide, it does start to get a little wobbly. So if you're mm -hmm. doing anything kind of like big movement wise, so you would never want to do like pistol whip or. You know, anything where you're going to do movements, like you're going to work out and do like O shape or super, um, you know, like super high, it's just something, anything where you're going to move a lot with your head, that's where I think it would get bad. But if you're doing anything else, weight wise, it's not bad. And the strap is really, really comfortable. Um, I don't know. I, I think Pimax, if they ever got their prices in order and they ever could ever get their like their website in order and just the small things with Pimax, or quit really over promising. I think yeah, that's well, here's a, here's a deal. Your product every fucking yeah. day. Give me a product. <laughs> this is guys, what you're gonna do, and that's it. Don't yeah. you know? Don't copy working. everybody. I don't they're know. seriously working. There, I, I, I have a on July 12th. I have a new uh, 8KX coming to the house. I have a brand new. I already have one now that they sent me that I've been working with. They're sending me another one, and the reason they're sending it because they're testing 120 hertz in the headset. 
and uh, you, you can't do it on the old headset. It has to be on the new one, the new version of it. So they're constantly, they're, so they're not like abandoning stuff. They're still working on stuff. I'm, I'm just happy they're still in this in this market. I mean, because they could have gone away so easily. And man, more more headset manufacturers that are here, the better. I agree. So, um, again, I have nothing against Pimax at all, but it, it always makes me very nervous when they do do these huge uh, showcases. At the very end, <laughs> they always have a disclaimer. For investors, please contact, and they put an email for investors. Like, yeah. there's no other company that usually right. do that. Uh, yeah, that always makes me a little nervous. But yeah, yeah. I, 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 just I, right. I just if they if they would ever like take pick two headsets and just mm -hmm. vote, like if they yeah. said, look, we're just gonna focus on the AKX and the and the uh, the crystal, and that's it. And then five yeah. K is gonna go away. You know, and all the other stuff's gonna go away. We're gonna focus on the standalone mm -hmm. and the high end heads uh, PC VR headset they probably would be so much better off. Yeah, I agree with that. Well, how do you make a new product and start folk, like talking about it and, and advertising it and you haven't delivered the last one to the people before? You know what I mean? Like that's, it's weird. Like I think they just, they're very over aggressive. They over promise. And, uh, and I think that's the, the biggest, their biggest thing is that people don't have any confidence in them anymore. After the way that they kind of treated their Kickstarters from that, initial uh 8k run you know they b literally before they had fulfilled all the orders to their uh kickstarter backers they already had a whole new line of headsets out that they were selling to the next gen and yeah. uh, i think it's stuff like that that really hurts them because you know while it takes them time they typically do live up to their technical promises mm -hmm. that they make with their products like for example with this next one this 12k or whatever they're promising pretty much everything that you could put everything that you could possibly put by today's technology into a vr headset and i don't doubt that they'll get there but are they going to get there by the end of this year are they going to get there by the end of next year probably not you know it's going to be a while right a new line before they get there you know like exactly yeah. I don't think the 12K is releasing until Snapdragon announces their next chip. Yeah. Right, right. And so what, did they promise it for December this year, or was it December next year that that was supposed was, to launch? It was supposed to be end of this year, but I, no I, I've i heard it's not going to happen. We'll, yeah, we're no happen. we'll see the crystal before we see the 12K. Yeah, well, we will. The crystal, the crystal is coming. The crystal is a viable product that is coming, and we'll, yeah. we'll, I believe we'll see it by the end of this year. Yeah, I agree with that. Um... While we're talking pricing, um, so a lot of people with this uh, new Valve headset expect it to cost at least as much as the Index uh, or the yeah. Index kit, which is what I what I would point out. If it's modular and there's going to be a base model, and you know it, we're assuming it's going to have inside-out tracking, so no base stations required. Uh, do you think it's possible that this thing actually might launch? you know, sub $1,000 on a base kit and then have options maybe that take it up to 12 or whatever? Uh, <laughs> uh man, I, I feel like if they are packing, if, if, if they are, if they do end up packing stuff like uh micro OLED, for example, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, if just the headset with the computer vision tracking or whatever, um, maybe controller is or whatever they they pack with that it wouldn't surprise me if that even started like at a thousand without anything else um so the base so literally sticking with the uh complete kit price for index what do you think happens to the index at that point do they cut it or the, they discontinue the, it i think they're gonna discontinue it uh, yeah. I, I i i i think there's already kind of signs for that to be honest for a discontinuation of the index um you think they're going to manufacture these uh, new headsets in house, or do you think they're going to partner with like LG or one other uh, or somebody I, like I, that? I, I, I don't think they would partner. Honestly, I, I think, uh, I, th I think Valve has gotten very comfortable uh, doing everything themselves for their own hardware. I think the Steam Deck is very good proof of that in general. Yeah, I mean, it's they, true that. they did pretty well during a, a supply chain crisis with that device, and they're still they're shipping out very well. Um, I, I think uh, I think Valve is a company that would that loves to partner with companies like HP, for example, and they'll continue to do stuff like that with any like 
new optics they come out with or whatever. But um, I still think for themselves, they do want to release like a next Valve or whatever product for sure under their name. Well, uh, yeah, well, uh, hopefully a lot of these questions get answered soon. Uh, I think I think it. I think it lends some credence to what you're saying here because the reason why we know what Meta's doing is because they're outsourcing and the reason we know what Sony's doing is because they're outsourcing and there's still a lot of question marks with Valve mm -hmm. uh, but I think that, that just it's because of what you're saying because they're all doing it all in house and they're very carefully uh, quietly drip feeding us information to people like you and yeah. uh, you know and, and the people that you work with so yeah, the the one thing sense. I do want to add to that as well is like, um, I, I even think Valve knows whatever they do sell um, is not going to have volumes similar to something like Meta sells. They're, they're usually okay with that um, because again, they're more invested in pushing the Steam platform. Um, and when it comes to Valve, and because of that, like the Valve Index sold pretty well honestly uh over the few years that it's been out but nowhere near the volumes of like a quest 2 or anything like that or, or anything like that uh and because of that supply chain doesn't pay attention to valve uh i was actually very happy because of my reporting uh mean like like ming chi kuo he actually recently followed me on twitter and he mm. has been actually in his reports finally mentioning that valve is working on a headset so my hope is because I'm saying, giving all this proof that they're working on something, these comp the, these supply chain analysts that are way better than me, have way more connections than me, will finally talk to more people and figure out what's going on. Because right. no matter who Valve is, he, if, 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 if someone like Ming Chi Kuo wants to spend some time talking to people, um, Valve's using very similar component supplier. Like I, I can name some of the suppliers they use for the index, for example, and it just... Um, these these big people couldn't know, so uh, I'm I'm just glad that these big supply chain analysts are focusing on VR first of all, but also finally naming Valve and the people that are making headsets because it's it was so hard because of that we only had data mining and patents, but um, because no one oh okay no one uh yeah no one no one cared to look into this small company's supply chain wait Valve makes hardware who's Valve I don't know <laughs> right 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed that as well when when he did uh, the the big uh, the one we reported on a couple of weeks ago that starts talking about the post meta era and how all the yeah. other uh, competitors are going to be able to take advantage of um, meta taking a step back. I did notice that there there was kind of there were line items for each individual manufacturer, and then there was one line item at the bottom that kind of you know lumped everyone else into one line and mm -hmm. valve was one of the uh one of the companies mentioned in that so yeah. and, and again that was the first time that uh that the word valve ever came out of his mouth so <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy <laughs> honestly I'm, I'm happy about that <laughs> uh anyway uh i think that's all i've got for you guys you you guys have anything you want to ask brad before we turn him loose I think we no. did. I think we hit yeah. a lot of stuff, man. There was a lot of great information here that uh, it it makes me uh, excited for hardware. In a year, I thought we would have way more hardware. I've been disappointed, but uh, I think I we're going to get a uh. dearth of hardware in the next six to eight months. Um, yeah, I had to buy a, I had to buy a haptics vest just so I could you know get my hardware fixed this year. I've been ready to buy something <laughs> since October. And nothing's coming. So, uh. well, well, even though like a lot of us got the timing wrong, like last year during Connect, and, but then later on, uh, I figure it's like maybe Bloomberg, they leaked out that Cambria was supposed to release last year. Right. So like, we were hearing the tidbits of information. It was just outdated roadmap right. information. And the same thing with uh, Sony too. Like PSVR two was supposed to. It, it's a year plus behind now. It was supposed to be here last year, but it, you know, shit happens, yeah. I guess, huh? Oh, yeah. Everything got fucked last year, man. That was yeah. like the, the year of screw everybody. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it was. Well, the, well, uh, the good, the, the good news is, is that we're, you know, everything's kind of been held up on one side of the dam, but it's all going to break loose at the same time, and we're, we've got a an amazing 2023 ahead of us. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 
the one final thing I want to add, uh, just as a little, uh, <laughs> this, this might be a little, a little, a little thing, but, um, you know, I report on things and, and people tend to not forget the times I, I've been wrong about things. So <laughs> well, I, I do well, like to spend Welcome to the moment. internet, buddy. Welcome to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I do like to spend one moment, if anyone's watching, uh, to say, uh, my sources have gotten a lot better, and this has been proven, rec uh, actually, literally this week, where on, uh, I think it was Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, I released a new uh, article on Sadly in Reality about Cambria, and I was here, I heard from sources that this week we were going to get the meta accounts announcement, and it was going to come out nice. uh, in August, and there's a lot more information in there, but if you go back to my video that was released before all this information in the article, um, I do get things right. I swear. <laughs> Something, you know, just, just. Well, you know, uh, I think I wouldn't take it too hard, man. Your, your, your following has steadily grown since then. If, if people, um, if, if you didn't have credibility, then you wouldn't have the following you have. So, yeah. you know, obviously, yeah. you're, you're, things are growing and, and going well for you. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, the, the news, the, the meta accounts. Um, what do you think about that? Is that a bait and switch, or, or do you think that there's legitimately some privacy to be gained from uh, from switching over? Uh, it's a bait and switch, isn't it? It is. I don't it's really totally. think it's a big deal. Uh, the one thing I think that it will benefit, like the the maybe the only benefit, uh, is if you get banned on Facebook, you won't lose that, your yeah, entire that, VR library yeah. and you can like some people like uh todd or whoever anybody anybody that's professional that maybe would be reluctant to to try to they don't, don't want to mix the worlds right and so they you know this is going to allow them to to keep everything separate so it should yeah. have been to begin with yeah i agree with that um i you well, know honestly i think we're past the uh age where you can make a, a fake email and then do right. whatever um i mean that's every service now i i think the meta accounts is improvement uh, but at the end of the day i i don't i don't think it's going to be uh if, if you're concerned about privacy and everything and yeah, like the data they're going to sell to people yeah, yeah. there that, there's not going to be a change yeah. there for sure yeah, yeah. Where, where i think it will help is is in places like like germany where you know they're super concerned with just the social media side they don't really care so much about the data mining Mm -hmm. um, where the German government is super um, concerned with making you do the social connection. Um, yeah. So I think that will allow places like Germany and, and other countries as well, it's not just Germany, that will allow them to, uh, to be able to, because there are people in those countries that actively want to buy these headsets and they just can't. Um, there's a huge German community, um, you know, uh, there's Facebook groups, there's Quest Facebook groups of, of people they have to go to other countries to buy stuff like this. So I think it will help in that sense. But if you're if you thinking you're going to get away from data mining, you're you're yeah. probably wrong in that fact. You have to make an account for everything. You want to play Red Dead 2, you got to have a Rockstar account, you know? I mean, like, the, it's so many others. Ubisoft, you know, like, this isn't new. It's just uh, we don't like Meta in the way that they did the, the whole beginning thing, so... They don't have a good track risk, uh, track record, is what it yeah. comes down to. Like they, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, anyway, Brad, thank you so much for uh, not only talking tech with us, but showing us around VR chat. I'm definitely going to uh, spend a little more time in here, or a lot more time in here, because uh, I'm a bit of a fan of digital art, and uh, you bring shown me in here. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. Yeah, check, check this place out, right? Yeah. Um, it, it, if I could say one thing about VR chat is, and I always say this to a lot of people, um, and even you, I, I think I, actually all three of you, the first time I came in here um, when we were setting up is the first impressions I'm hearing is, oh, I'm tired of these children, I'm tired of these children, yes. this is terrible, why are we here, basically, is what I'm hearing. Um, but VR chat is uh, really a special platform once you find like a, a group of people. And that's why, um, I, I, I mean, you guys are invited. Every, every Saturday, uh, I, I, I lead large world hopping groups like what we did today find That's new awesome. worlds and everything so you guys are welcome oh, cool. to come i would anytime. definitely do it and i think this is yep. a blast man I, that that ship experience that that music you know high fidelity you know visuals i thought that was amazing i would love to do that kind of, i love that kind of stuff yep yeah. uh, vr chat really does feel like the internet in the 90s where there's just a ton of 
experimentation, a lot of new stuff, and uh, again, it's 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 got bad stigma because of the public lobbies, but it's really a really really nice place to spend your time in VR. So yeah, you can just chill, hang out, enjoy the. Uh, you know, I've always said that like there's there are good experiences to get even from bad games because even if the game's not fun, you've been somewhere, right? You've you've experienced a new place. It, it's not like playing a flat game and VR chat's kind of like that to the nth degree like infinite worlds to uh, mm. to uh, enjoy and, uh, mm -hmm. and visit digital tourism at its finest you know. See, what you're saying is you haven't lived unless you've gone to Tornuffalo that's world because uh, that uh, was taco, place. taco face world taco uh, face uh, ashi, ashi wash world ashi wash because you know, who doesn't want to do with feet, deal with feet in VR <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brad, you got anything going on that uh, coming up that people might want to check out? Uh, no, not really. Uh, no. just just keep an eye on my Twitter shit posting, and yeah. Sadly, it's Bradley on uh, on all social media, right? Uh, Twitter, yeah. YouTube. Uh, it's uh, bradsmills.com and sadlyinreality.com. Again, you'll find all that stuff linked in the description below. Um yeah so again thanks brad for hanging out with us and yeah. uh thanks to everyone who uh tuned in to watch this episode of on location if you like the video you know what to do give it a thumbs up if you're new to the channel click all the stuff the big red button ring the bell uh yeah thanks for watching everyone and for eric and roots and brad i'm wes we will see you next time friends bye Stay easy. See you later.